Hi everyone, this is a short video on the concept of monetary aggregates, which is basically a tool of measuring the money supply in the economy. So you must have come across these terms by now that is M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, right? So these are the terms, these are basically used to measure the money supply in the economy. So let us see these terms one by one. So the first one is M0, which is also known as the base money or the high powered money. We call it as high powered money because it reflects the total liability of the Reserve Bank of India. So these include one currency in circulation, second, the bank's deposits with the RBI Reserve Bank of India, and then it also includes other deposits with the Reserve Bank of India. So other deposits with our Reserve Bank of India is basically uh, the deposits of, you know, uh, deposits other than the ones that are made by the bank, then deposits of the government, state government, central government, they have their accounts with the Reserve Bank of India. So these three things, that is currency in circulation, second is banks deposits with the Reserve Bank of India, and thirdly, other deposits constitutes the M0. Now it is it must be very clear that banks money with the Reserve Bank of India and other deposits with the Reserve Bank of India are the liability of the Reserve Bank of India because the Reserve Bank of India ultimately has to return this money to whosoever it belongs. If it is the government's money it has to return to the government. If it is the bank's money it has to return to the bank. But here we are talking, also, we are also including the currency in circulation. Now you must have seen the currency note and on the currency note, you know, there is a fine print, a fine text where it reads, I promise to pay the bearer rupees. Let's say there is a hundred rupees note. So I promise to pay the bearer rupees, hundred rupees. And there is the sign of the Reserve Bank of India's governor. So again, this is a liability because the Reserve Bank of India's governor is promising that it will pay the bearer this much money. So it's a liability. So this includes the, this concludes the M0 portion over here. Now let us see what is M1. M1, which is also known as the narrow money, and it is also known as the measure of liquidity in the economy. So M1 basically includes currency in circulation, other deposits with RBI and it also includes the people's money deposited in banks. So currency in circulation is there fine but it also includes the people's money deposited in banks and when we say money deposited in banks we are basically referring to demand deposits or we are referring to checking accounts. So this is a measure of liquidity. So currency in circulation is very clear that it is a measure of liquidity but demand deposits are also a great measure of liquidity because people don't really keep the money with themselves in the form of currency but they deposit it in the bank and at any given time they can withdraw it you know in the, from the saving account or the current account they can deposit no, they can withdraw it or they can swipe using the debit card. So it is again a measure of the liquidity. So it includes the most liquid type of money that is there in the economy and we also call it as narrow money. Now M2 is basically the M1 that we talked about all that money that is there that we measured and then it includes the money deposited with the post office savings bank. Now again when we talk about money that is deposited with the post office savings bank we are talking about savings deposits. So these are just like the saving accounts with your commercial banks. So money that you do, likewise there is a inst financial instrument known as post office savings bank. So the definition of M1, M2 is broader than the M1s, right? Because it includes M1 was this, that is it included the currency in circulation plus demand deposits plus other deposits with the RBI. But we, we, when we talk about the M2, we also include the, the saving deposits with the post office savings bank. 
So the definition or the scope of M2 is broader than the M1s. Now let us see what is M3. M3 is also known as broad money. M1 was narrow money. M3 is known as broad money. So M3 includes M1. It includes all the money that was there in the M1. Plus it includes the time deposits made in with the banks. Remember when people deposit their money with the bank, it is of two types, the deposits. So one is the de demand deposit. That is any time people can withdraw the money from the bank. And then there is the time deposit. That is the money has been deposited for a fixed period of time. So something like a fixed deposit. So the money is locked in for a specific period of time. So you can see over here that M1 was liquid, but M3 is less liquid because the money that has been put in the bank in the form of time deposit is locked in for a specific period of time. So M1 was this, it was narrow, but M3, the definition is broader because it includes more types of money in it. So it also includes the less liquid money. And lastly, coming to M4. M4 is basically M3 plus all deposits with the post office savings bank. So this is M4. So you can see that M1 was narrow and M4 is bro even broader, right? But for convenience sake, M1 is known as narrow money and M3 is known as broad money. These are the things that are very important for your prelims. And this is all we have in this video. Thank you for streaming in and all the best for your examination. Bye-bye.